Hello all and, and thank you for joining our automation recipe session for IBM RPA. My name is Jukka Juselius and I work for our technical team for our digital business automation here in EMEA. And today I will be walking you through how to use attended automation with IBM RPA. Uh, what are the different components and configurations that you need to use and have in place in order to facilitate attended automation scenarios. So as you might be already aware, so we offer different capabilities as part of our RPA platform. And today we are focusing on attended bot automation that we can also call as RDA, remote desktop automation. That is um, kind of a flavor of using RPA so that the business users or users uh, of computer can then uh, trigger and start automations on demand whenever they need to do so. If we just briefly look at the underlying architecture here, so um, every computer that you want to use to run your developed automations, your bots, you need to install the agent, so that's the runtime environment. Uh, if you are doing development in that computer, then you also need to install the studio. And, and if you want to then uh, also enable the attended automation, you need to install the launcher application that the user can then start and, and trigger bots whenever user needs to do so. Uh, you also most probably want to install the local credential vault that the user of the computer can then uh, securely use to manage all of the needed credentials for the different automations that the user will, will trigger on demand. So let's first look at the, the launcher component. So the launcher application itself, it's, it's a desktop application that, that can be installed as part of the client package, as I mentioned. And that's the application that the uh, user of the computer needs to start in order to trigger bots on demand. Uh, the launcher then displays uh, different buttons um, uh, via the launcher definitions that we create for users uh, and needs just to tr click some of the, the buttons to trigger uh, a specific bot uh, on demand. So if we look at the, the launcher definitions first, so um, they are made um, via the web uh, client, so the, the web console that we use to configure the different services to the tenant that we are using. Uh, there's a launcher section here that you can access, but you need to be uh, uh, an admin to, to access the launchers. Uh, but if you are an admin, then you can uh, access this section and create new launchers here. So when creating launchers, um, uh, we need to assign at least one or more uh, user group here. So that's the mechanism how we define which are the users uh, that can have access to the specific launcher definition that we are just creating here. Um, so of, of course, there can be more than one groups uh, assigned here uh, and, and that will determine the users who can who can then make use of the, the launcher here. Then as part of the launcher definition, we can create uh, what we call buttons, uh, which are then assigned to a specific automation scripts or, or bots, if you will. So um, there's one thing that you need to know. So in, in order to assign bots here uh, to, to launcher buttons, those bots need to be obviously published to the tenant so that we can uh, even select them from the list of, of bots uh, published to the tenant. And then uh, one of the versions of the bot need to be also uh, marked as the production version. So um, that being then the version that will be triggered whenever the user uh, uses the launcher to trigger the specific bot. Um, then the user um, can start the launcher application using the, the desktop shortcut that is automatically created when the launcher is installed. Uh, and the user needs to log in in order to, to, for us to know who is the user. And, and then especially 
which are the groups of the user that the user belongs to. Um, the desktop application then shows all the different launcher definitions that are available for the user based on those group definitions that we actually uh, made when we are defining the launchers. And then user can select one of the launchers here and then um, click uh, one of the buttons to, to run the specific bot that the user needs or wants to run. Good, then I will be showing you this, how, how this works in, in practice. Let's switch to my uh, virtual machine here that I have my client components installed to. Uh, so let's first start the, the launcher application. So I'm just showing that I don't have anything here uh, already defined that I can access. So I was already logged in, so it didn't ask my credentials, so I can see myself logged in here. So we can close the launcher for now and then let's go to my tenant that I'm using here and let's define a new launcher. So you, you click the launcher section here then and then you can see the, the launchers that have been already defined here and you can start creating a new launcher. So let's just name it demo, description demo and then the groups. So I have already defined a group named Yukka that I've added only myself as a participant. So, so the launcher will be just targeted to me. And then we can add a button here. So I have really simple um, script here that I wanna use for demonstration, say hello. Um, the script itself is say hello. So I have already uh, published this to the tenant and the only version that I have here is also marked as production. So I can use it for my launcher here and then I can save. And we should be good here. So we can save the actual launcher definition also. Good. Now we have a, a demo launcher defined. And since it was uh, targeted to, to group name Yukka, where I'm the only participant. Now when I open my launcher, I should have the say hello um, under demo launcher here. And then I can double click to run run the, the actual bot. And I thought, as I was saying, the bot is really simple. It's just asking for my name uh, in an input box command. And then it displays a message box saying hello, my name that I just gave to it. So, that was it, so really simple script just to demonstrate the, the launcher thing here. So um, I think that, that kind of shows you how you can easily define new launchers and how you can then use the launchers uh, via the launcher app. So now back to the, the presentation. So let's next look at the credential vaults here. So uh, to start with, I guess it's, it's good to kind of mention here that we do have two different vaults that we can use. So the one that we call system vault, which is actually the tenant repository, and then the local RDA vault uh, that we use for attended uh, bot automation. Um, if we look at the RDA vault, so it's, it's yet again a Windows application that gets installed when we install the components needed for attended uh, automation to a computer, uh, which is then the application that user needs to open and then can use uh, to, to manage the, the all the needed bot credentials here within the, the computer that the user is using. Uh, for security reasons, it's, it's good to also uh, remember that the, the local vault uh, need to be opened every 20, 24 hours using the user uh, credentials. Uh, before we can actually make use of, of either one of the vaults, we need to register or we need to create those credentials. Um, so that also differs uh, for uh, each one of the, the vaults that we can use. So if, if you are registering a, a credential to be used with, with RDA, so with uh, uh, attended bot automation, our focus here today, 
you actually do that under configuration and, and under vault credentials. And then if you are registering a credential to system vault uh, to be used by uh, unattended bots that, that we manage uh, and schedule uh, in a centralized manner, then you need to go directly to the credential section uh, of the tenant configuration. And then one really important thing here, so when, when our automations, our bots that we develop want to access the, the credentials for different vaults, there's a, a command that we use for that, so called get vault item. So if you want to access credentials for the system vault, uh, for uh, unattended bots, then you just need to kind of make sure that the system option here is enabled. Um, and then if you don't enable the system option here, then the get vault item command will try to use the local RDA vault for attended bot automation. Good. Let's then also look how, how this works in practice. Back to the virtual machine that is. Um, so let's let's first look at the the credential registration for RDA, the local vault. So as I was explaining already, so for RDA, uh, for attended usage, you need to go to configuration and then vault credentials. And here you can then then define different credentials for your uh, local vault usage. So what I have already done so here is, is to define DPAOC uh, named credential. Uh, and the only thing that you need to do is actually kind of create the key uh, uh, to the credential. And then you need to define yet again a group that I've already done here, added uh, myself yet again here. So that the users that you have defined here belonging to the groups will then uh, be able to use this key and manage the key uh, uh, locally using the RDA vault. So that's already done. I don't need to do anything with that. So next uh, we could actually have a look at the script uh, that we are using here for the demonstration. Um, so let's start the studio. So here we go. Um, and this is the, the actual script that we are using to demonstrate this. Um, so this is a, a login sequence to, to run on the, the cloud services that we use here internally. Um, so it has a subroutine here uh, with 10. Uh, gets uh, my username and the password from the local vault. So if I open the get vault item command, so I'm actually uh, trying to find this DPAOC um, as I just show you. So that's defined or registered uh, to be the RDA uh, uh, credential. So I'm just then saving the username and then password to to different uh, variables here. And I don't have system um, switch here enabled. And that means that I'm actually using my local uh, credential wall for attended automation. Good, and, and then um, when I have got the, the, the username and, and the password from the credential wall, I'm actually using them in a couple of different places. So this is um, kind of a multi-step login procedure here that, that I'm automating. Good. Um, so then um, next, I think we could have a look at the, the actual credential vault then. So um, it, it's, it's not kind of open because I have not opened it yet. So I need to kind of open the vault first. And when you open your vault for the first time, you need to give it a, a password that I need to then type in, in in order to really open the vault. And when it's opened, 
then I can start managing the things that I have there. So as you can see, I have the DPA OC credential here configured already. So I, I did that, that already previously before this demonstration. Um, if I would need to change the, the, the password here, so um, then I would select this and I could change the username and the password uh, if I need to update it for some reason, for example. So I'm not doing that uh, now. So everything also seems to be in order here in my local vault. So I can close that one. And then um, let's create a launcher also for my uh, login script. So actually I have created a launcher definition already here and attach the, the, the actual script that I showed you. So I have uploaded it to the tenant and I've already created a button here. So what I need to do here is to add my group yet again here to my launcher definition so that this launcher will be uh, kind of targeted uh, to me, uh, to the users who are belonging to Yucca group here. So I save that. And when the launcher is saved, um, now I should have access to both of these launchers uh, when I open my launcher application. So let's see it. Good, and I do. So I have logins. I still have my demo here to say hello that we uh, ran earlier. And now I can also start logging to, to DPA on Cloud Script. So let's try it. The, the vault is, is open. Yeah, we can see it open. Uh, we have the launcher, so let's do it. So just double clicking it and then the, the automation starts. So um, as I was saying, this is a kind of a multiple step login script. So now it already got my login ID from the, the RDA vault and it then uses uh, the information to, to log in uh, to this specific site. Um, and we should be in uh, right now. Good. So it was working quite nicely. So, so this is just kind of an in internal kind of platform for our uh, DBA stuff that we use here internally. Um, so that was a successful run, so to say. So the, the credential vault, the local one for attended automation, um, seems to be working, which is nice. And then I just want to show if I need to leave my computer um, uh, for a while, for example, I can also um, kind of close the vault in the sense that, that no one can actually then go and, and start managing or changing the password uh, if somebody would get their hands on my computer when I'm away from my computer for uh, for a while, for example. Good, uh, I think this actually concludes uh, our presentation here. So uh, I just hope that, that you got uh, now a basic understanding how you can define and how you can use launchers for attended automation and then also how you can use uh, the local, the, the RDA uh, credential vault locally within the machine um, that the user is, is triggering the bots using the launchers also as part of the, the automations here.